a tour of the new California garden, bountiful harvest we made this month, some things for you to do, gardening tips, advice and a lot more in today's episode of California Gardening. So let's begin with a tour of the raised beds. In the first bed we have our ground cherries, the pineapple ground cherries and some eggplants. And in the center we have some gourds. This I believe is a white pumpkin that was a volunteer plant from the compost. And we have some onions. You can see the onion bulbs are now getting bigger. And we also have interplanted some bunching onions or green onions in between these onions and we'll use them for greens. And you can see the new trellis that we added. The watermelon plant is now trying to climb on this trellis. You can see some soybeans here that are growing well. And a lot of okras that are now doing a lot better in the heat. And coming back to the trellis, this was an idea that you all suggested as viewers and we were very happy to incorporate that idea by building this trellis between the raised beds. You can see this Japanese cucumber plant that's trying to climb on this trellis. And this trellis is between the raised beds. So it also maximizes a lot of the area that we use for gardening. So thanks to everyone who provided all the valuable tips and suggestions. In the peppers bed, we have a lot of pepper varieties. You can see the candy cane pepper. The bell peppers that are getting very large now and growing quite well. And I had always struggled to grow peppers but I think this season my peppers are doing very well. I have been feeding them with organic fertilizers to start with. And every 10 days or so I feed them fish emulsion and earthworm casting tea and they seem to be doing good. You can see these giant Marconi peppers as well. All the peppers are growing quite well. The cayenne peppers, these are organic cayenne peppers that have been saving seeds for quite some time now. And I'll continue to save seeds because this is a very prolific pepper variety. And once again you can see the trellis. This is the second trellis. So this trellis design, this trellis idea gives us a lot of room to use in our garden. And I've got some bean plants planted right next to the trellis. Now coming to the tomato bed, you can see there are a lot of tomatoes. And we interplanted these tomatoes with some flowers which are very beneficial. And these plants are absolutely loaded with these cherry tomatoes. And right next to that we have the salsa tomato. Once again a very nice tomato variety and some more tomato varieties as you can see and the lettuce that's interplanted between the tomatoes is growing well too. You can see some more tomatoes here. So overall I'm pretty happy with the way the lettuce and tomatoes have grown together and you can see the two trellises here with this view. They look beautiful. So building trellises between the raised beds is a much better idea than building it on the raised bed. And finally in the bed at the end we have a lot of taro plants growing. The ivy gourds are on the back. And we have one black beauty eggplant, some kale. These kale plants are doing okay despite being in full sun. And the sunchoke plants, these have really taken off. And they are becoming so huge that I think I'll probably have to dig a lot to remove all these sunchoke plants at the end of the season. The stems are getting very thick too. And this is our lone Romanesco plant that had a lot of insect damage. But hopefully it will grow well. And then we have the watermelon. The watermelon as you can see is producing a baby watermelon. And I'm really excited to see how this one grows. And it might take maybe a month or two to get to its full size. We have our longevity spinach that's growing. It's growing quite well now. And some more watermelon plants that are just using the raised bed to grow. 
So overall, this is how our raised bed garden looks like. And now let's look at our containers. We have our Malabar spinach growing in this first container and they're growing a lot better now. And they will be growing on this trellis that we created. We have our black beauty eggplant. As you can see, the eggplants are quite large and this plant is growing quite well. You need to make sure that you don't feed too much nitrogen to your eggplants. You can see the amethyst eggplant here also producing a lot of eggplants. And we did harvest a lot of eggplants this month as well. But you can still see some growing around the plant. This is our pole bean plant and you can see it has really taken off and it has started climbing on this trellis that we added. This is a ladder trellis that you can get at any garden center. And this is a little herb barrel which has Thai basil surrounded by some cilantro and some marigold plants, beautiful flowers. And you can see some soybeans here. These soybean pods are now maturing and hopefully we'll be able to harvest these soybeans or edamame very soon. We have our chilies here. This is the bird's eye chili doing quite well in this container. And the other pepper plant is doing okay. But I think the two pepper plants are now struggling for space. We have our baby baba okra. And we planted a lot of okra plants in this container. And it seems to be a lot for this one barrel. Our pumpkin plant is also growing well. It's actually winding out to the side. As you can see on both the sides we have the vines as well as the pumpkins. The pumpkins are growing as well. And on the other side as well you can see the vines are growing quite well. And we have the hyacinth bean. This is the climbing variety of the hyacinth bean. It's now producing flowers. Followed by our Anaheim chili peppers. As you can see they are loaded with peppers right now. And we probably need to stake these pepper plants so that we can easily harvest all these wonderful peppers that are growing around it. The Anaheim chili pepper is a very productive plant. This is the cantaloupe plant or the cantaloupe or the musk melon and the vines are growing all over the place here. Followed by a mint plant which is in full sun and it seemed to be bolting a little bit. You can see some flowers that are appearing. And our husky cherry red tomato, our tried and trusted tomato variety that has produced a lot of tomatoes. And we harvested all the cherry tomatoes from this plant and followed by the eggplant. This is the millionaire eggplant, which gave us a few eggplants last month and it continues to produce more eggplants. And these eggplants are absolutely delicious. We have our Nombo Giant Okra plant. The Nombo Giant Okra has produced a lot of okra pods. And since I've run out of seeds, I'm just letting some of these okras mature. And I will be then able to save the seeds for this wonderful okra variety. It's one of the most productive okra varieties I've grown. Flowers are beautiful. The pods are quite large. And it grows quite well. We finally have our corn. We did harvest some corn this month and we left the others to mature for a little longer on the plant and we should be able to harvest all our corn very soon. And that completes the tour of our container garden. And now let's look at all the harvests we made this month, beginning with corn. Our corn plants were growing in this whiskey barrel container and they produced a lot of cobs. Now one of the ways to check whether your corn cobs are ready for harvest is peel off a little bit and check the kernels and then you can just pull out the corn if everything looks okay. And just like that you can check the kernels before you harvest. Each corn plant should produce two to three cobs and that's pretty much a standard. You can go higher or lower depending on how your corn plant is growing. Another indicator to look at, look for the corn silks. They should be dry and here you can see we harvested some good quality corn and we left the rest of the corn to mature on the plant. Moving on to the next plant we are now harvesting our amethyst eggplant. 
And if you remember this eggplant was growing in this whiskey barrel container for quite some time now. And look at the eggplants, they are just beautiful. And this was one of our higher producers. It did produce a lot of eggplants. And it has been producing a lot of eggplants for quite some time now. Now the eggplants do start off with a deep purple color and then become a lighter amethyst color. So you can harvest these eggplants pretty much any time once they reach a decent size. And here you can see the harvest, they look pretty good. And we were able to harvest eggplants from this plant several times during this month. And it's also pretty easy to grow. You can see it's a pretty compact plant and we're growing two of these in one whiskey barrel container. So it's rather easy to grow these eggplants which produces beautiful eggplants which are very delicious. Moving on to the millionaire eggplant. This is a Japanese type eggplant, long eggplant. And this was the first time we harvested eggplants from this plant. And you can see beautiful looking eggplant once again. This is a lot more tender than the amethyst eggplant. So if you like tender eggplants, this is a great eggplant variety to grow. It's quite prolific and it performs quite well. We have the black beauty eggplant. This is one of the most common eggplant varieties. And we harvested our first black beauty eggplant this month. You can see quite a large eggplant. And a lot of people grow this eggplant because it's quite large. Moving on to grapes. We have two varieties of grapes that are growing in our garden. This is the lollipop grape. And the lollipop grape actually turns a little blue once it matures. However, this is the first year we are growing these grapes. And ideally, I wasn't even expecting any grapes. But I did see that the grapes were drying on the vine. And it was time to harvest them. And they were sweet as well. I tasted a couple and they seem to be very sweet. So you can see the grapes here. These are the lollipop grapes. They look amazing. And I think next year onwards, I let them mature a little bit more than what you're seeing here. But they were still very sweet and very delicious. Pineapple ground cherries. We had two pineapple ground cherry plants growing and they were producing a lot of pineapple ground cherries. Now the pineapple ground cherries are basically called ground cherries because the cherries they just fall on the ground once they are mature. So all you need to do is lift the plant and pick up the cherries from the bottom. These are very sweet and very delicious cherries. And I was quite surprised at how productive the pineapple ground cherry plant is. It just produced a lot of cherries. As you can see here, they look like mini tomatillos. They're quite sweet. They have a pineapple taste. And once you shell them, this is how they look like. Beautiful ground cherries. Moving on to ivy gourd. Our ivy gourd plant was growing on our raised bed. And we got a lot of ivy gourds and I believe July is the most productive month for ivy gourds. It's the peak of the summer season and this plant just goes crazy producing gourds during this time. And you can see they look very much like mouse melons, but they're not mouse melons. They are different. They are ivy gourds. They taste a lot different. And they are extremely easy to grow. You just have to provide them some support and they will keep producing these ivy gourds throughout the summer season. And you can see here the plant is loaded with ivy gourds. In fact, I could not keep up with harvesting the ivy gourds. And there were plenty of ivy gourds to be harvested. Now ivy gourd is a pretty forgiving plant. You don't really need to take much care of it and it still produces quite a lot which is what makes it very interesting to grow in your home garden. It's pretty much a independent plant. You don't really need to care much about it. Just water it well, give it some good organic fertilizer and that's pretty much it. It doesn't get much affected by pests or diseases. And once the ivy gourd becomes red, it's not a good idea to harvest it. I mean, you can just harvest it and throw it to prevent the seeds from spreading around. But if your ivy gourd turns red, you've waited too long. The right time to harvest ivy gourd is when they're green and tender. And you can see just in one day, the ivy gourd plant has produced a lot of gourds. 
and we kept harvesting these ivy gourds for the rest of the month too. So all in all, I think the ivy gourd was also a very productive plant this month, yielding us a lot of ivy gourds. You can see the harvest, it looks beautiful. And on several days, we were able to harvest these ivy gourds. Moving on to lettuce. We had our lettuce plants interplanted between the tomatoes. And that gave them a lot of shade. And you can see the lettuce leaves, they look beautiful. Quite nice, quite juicy. And they were also getting a lot of water. I made sure that I watered them a little extra compared to the tomatoes. Because you do need to keep your lettuce plants well watered. And this was the green lettuce that we were growing. And this actually was the most delicious variety that we were growing. And it's very easy to harvest the lettuce leaves. Initially I was trying to use a scissor. But I think you can just hand pick these lettuce leaves. And you can see the harvest. It looks beautiful. Wonderful crunchy lettuce right in your backyard. And we were also growing this other variety of lettuce. The one with the red or purple leaves. This plant did not produce a lot of large leaves, but it was still very delicious, a good addition to your salad bowl or for juicing. It does add a lot of good color as well to your salad. And this is how it looks like. Again, quite beautiful. Not as prolific as the green one though. Moving on to longevity spinach. The longevity spinach plant was growing in our raised bed and this is a perennial. It doesn't have to be planted again and again. And we use a lot of the longevity spinach leaves to prepare a lot of dishes. And I'll probably share a recipe with you in the future on how we use longevity spinach. But we cook it with lentils and ginger and some spices and it tastes just absolutely amazing. Now compared to the regular spinach varieties and Swiss chard, the longevity spinach has a distinctly different taste. It's hard to describe, but I really love the taste of longevity spinach. The best part is you can harvest longevity spinach pretty much throughout the year. Unlike spinach, which only grows in the cool season. This is a much better option if you want a continuous supply of spinach in your garden. Okra. The Nombo Giant Okra was growing in this whiskey barrel container. And throughout the month, we were getting a lot of harvest from this okra plant. Now you can harvest the okra when it's tender, like it looks here. Or you can wait for the pods to become a little larger. Here you can see how large the pods can get. This is quite a large pod. But the good thing is, even though this pod is larger, it's still very tender. And this is the beauty about the Nombo Giant Okra plant. Even if the pod grows quite large, it doesn't get stringy and woody like some other okra varieties. Because this is expected to produce long and big okras. And this is a heavy producer. I think I was quite happy with the number of okras this plant produced. And on the raised beds, we had our emerald okra growing. Now, not one of my favorite varieties. I don't think I'll be growing this next year. It's a very slow growing plant. Not an excellent producer. But the okras are very delicious. The one reason that you should be growing emerald okra is for the taste. The emerald okras taste very nice and they are decently productive. The plant itself is not very vigorous, so it grows slowly. But it will give you a few okras here and there throughout the growing season. So if you're not looking for a heavy crop of okra, but rather want good tasting okra, but just a few of them, then this okra might be one that you want to grow. But definitely not as productive as the Nombo Giant or other okra varieties I have grown. But as I mentioned, quite delicious and easy to grow. The plant itself is not prolific, but once you plant it, it doesn't have a lot of issues with pests or diseases. And you can see here the okra, it looks beautiful. So all in all, the emerald is a secondary choice for me now. I think going forward from next season onwards, I might not grow this okra variety. Moving on to peppers. Our first pepper variety is the bird's eye chili pepper. And this is a very prolific chili variety that produces extremely hot peppers. Now these peppers are not as hot as the black cobra pepper, for example. But they're also not as mild as the cayenne pepper. 
So they're a little spicy compared to cayenne peppers, which makes them excellent in a lot of variety of dishes. And you can see the green as well as the red peppers here. All the green peppers will eventually turn red. And this is one more plant where we could not keep up with the harvest. The peppers just kept growing. And you can see they have turned red now. And we might just harvest all of these peppers to make some chili powder. Powdered chili is extremely easy to make at home and you can just keep it, store it for a long time. But if you're looking for a nice spicy pepper variety, I think the bird's eye chili is one of the most prolific pepper varieties that I've grown. Always loaded with peppers and it not only tastes good but is also very spicy and very nice to use. You can see the harvest. Again, nice looking peppers. And then we have the giant Marconi. I'm growing the giant Marconi for the first time this year and I'm absolutely thrilled and I think these peppers are amazing. They're more like the sweet bell peppers, but they are larger, longish. You can use them in a variety of dishes. You can stuff them. They taste very good. And compared to the bell peppers, I think the giant Marconi is a lot easier to grow. It's also more productive. Jalapenos. We had just one jalapeno plant and this jalapeno plant did produce a lot of jalapenos. Now jalapenos are one of my favorite peppers. They're spicy, they're delicious and they go with almost everything. So you could just cook up some meal and then prepare jalapenos, just grill them or fry them and then you can consume them and they taste amazing with any meal and which is why I'll be growing more jalapenos next season. Candy cane peppers. This was one pepper variety that we wanted to try this year. Nothing special about it. It just looks pretty. Tastes very much like bell pepper, the sweet bell pepper. Which is here, right here. The peppers, the bonnie bell pepper that we were growing. Which is the bell pepper. The classic bell pepper. This month, we were able to harvest quite a lot of peppers. You can see here the peppers. They look quite full, quite nice and of decent size. And this is exactly how your pepper should look like. If you're growing a healthy plant, this is how your peppers look like. And I was quite pleased with the progress of this pepper plant. I think it grew quite vigorously and you can see the peppers, they look amazing. Moving on to strawberries. We were growing our strawberries in the strawberry tower. It's a very cheaply made strawberry tower but we have been using it for a few months now and you can build this one very easily yourself. I'll probably have a guide to building the strawberry tower in one of my future videos but you can see the strawberries they are very clean very nice if you grow strawberries in this kind of a container which has slots around it they don't touch the soil they don't touch the ground so they are a lot cleaner and it makes them very easy to harvest and also extremely clean to eat without any insect damage. You can see here the strawberries, they look quite good. And we have a lot of different varieties of strawberry that's growing in the strawberry tower. And as I mentioned, I'll hopefully have a guide on how to build the strawberry tower very easily. But you can see here there are a lot of benefits of growing strawberries in this kind of a container compared to any regular container in the raised bed or in the ground. And one of the best strawberry varieties I've grown this year is the Sweet Kiss strawberry variety. I think it produces excellent strawberries, very sweet, very delicious. And the flowers look beautiful as well. Moving on to tomatoes, our grape tomatoes were one of the first producers on our raised bed and you can see the tomatoes, they look absolutely amazing. The grape tomato, although it doesn't mention which grape tomato variety this is, this is very similar to any classic grape tomato and the plant was not as prolific as some of the other grape tomato varieties like Juliet for example, but it was an early producer and it did give us a lot of grape tomatoes. Now grape tomatoes are larger than cherry tomatoes but still a lot small compared to the regular size tomatoes. They're also not as sweet as cherry tomatoes. And our trusted husky cherry red tomato 
absolutely loaded with tomatoes and it was loaded with tomatoes almost all of this month and while it's a lot of work to harvest these cherry tomatoes it's a good thing that kids enjoy they love to harvest cherry tomatoes so if you have kids and you want to delegate some work you know what to do and i've noticed that the cherry tomatoes are best harvested once they reach this red color you can see the harvest it looks beautiful but i think this will be the final month for our husky cherry red tomato and more tomatoes you're seeing some other tomato varieties like the salsa the bonnie improved there are a lot of other tomato varieties that we were growing and you can see the tomatoes they are quite large quite nice i was quite impressed especially with the salsa tomato variety which was quite prolific produced a lot of tomatoes and although the plant was not large it did produce a lot of tomatoes which is more important so all in all i think so far the tomato season has been quite productive and the biggest producer of course was our super 100 cherry tomato it's loaded with tomatoes lot of sweet small cherry tomatoes great for eating in salads and they have a distinctively sweet taste so if you're looking for tomatoes that are not sweet this is not a good variety for you but i love these in salads they just taste amazing and they come in bunches you can see all these bunches of cherry tomatoes that are quite prolific quite productive and i've actually gotten tired of harvesting these tomatoes there are so many and now let's look at some things to do in the garden beginning with pest control pest control means controlling the bad guys or the bad insects in your garden and our weapon of choice is neem oil this is neem oil extract that you can purchase at any garden store i'll also provide a link in the comment section below where you can buy this on amazon always look at the first pinned comment to buy any product that i've discussed in the video and this is a small sprayer so i'm adding three capfuls here if you are using a larger sprayer you can add a little bit more and read the instructions on the product to see how much you need to mix and after mixing it with water we're going to spray the corn silks now this is a very important step you need to do when growing corn if you don't do this the corn worm will just eat up your corn when it's being ready and i have had this damage in the past and ever since i have been spraying my corn silks and i've always been getting a decent harvest now make sure that you watch your tomato plants carefully if you have tomato plants that look like this you probably have this little buddy on your tomato plant that's chewing away the leaves this is the tomato hornworm and just remove this pest as soon as you see it and while it looks really beautiful look how gorgeous it looks just amazing this pest though will completely devastate your tomato plant in a matter of hours and this is one more reason why you should be monitoring your plants and making sure that there are no insects or pests on your plant and one more important activity that you need to do for your tomato plants is pruning now i'll admit it i hate pruning it's just a lot of work i am always behind when it comes to pruning but it's extremely important to prune your tomato plants remove all the brown and dead leaves any branches like this that are growing on the side they are no value to your tomato growing and will introduce a lot of diseases which will ultimately destroy your tomato plant so any yellow leaves any brown leaves feel free to just remove them and i usually don't even compost it i just throw it in the trash and remove any suckers that are growing the suckers will also take up energy from your plant and not cause your plants to grow very well and for our next section we will look at how to build a trellis between raised beds and for this you need a wire remesh this is a 42 inches by 84 inches wire remesh sheet and this is usually found in the hardware section of your home improvement store and the first thing we'll do is paint it now painting this is a real pain it takes a lot of time and if you're using a brush like me it will probably take you a good 30 minutes to paint each of these meshes but once done what you need to do is put one mesh on each side of your bed and this height is 42 inches the width is 84 inches so you need two of those 
Now once you put the mesh, I'm using a 5 foot fence post to secure this mesh and it's extremely easy to secure it. There are already holes in the fence. All you need to do is use some wire ties and the wire ties will just lock in place. They will hold the fence in place and once you do that, your trellis is pretty much done if you just want one side. Like I was using this as an independent trellis just on one side of the bed. But if you want the trellis across your raised beds, then you have to add in one more panel on the other side. So as you can see, I'm just finishing up the panel on one side by using these wire ties. And then I'm doing the same thing on the other side of the raised bed. So I'll be creating exactly the same base trellis. And you can see you can just have to really position your fence posts and then keep your trellis right next to the fence post where you can use the wire ties to secure them. And you may have to move the fence a little bit here and there depending on where your mesh actually sits. And after that it's easy. All you do is use wire ties to secure the fence. So you now have one horizontal fence which is 42 inches in height, 84 inches in length and you're now securing them with the wire ties. And once you have these two ready, you can see them side by side here. You can use them as independent trellises. But what we have done is to add a trellis between the raised beds, we added another panel on top of it and we are securing it now. And it overlaps about two sections. You can see two of the squares overlap. So that gives us enough room to tie these two trellises together. And all we really did was to just hold the trellis and then tie it. You don't even need to bend the trellis which goes on top. It just takes a natural curve shape. And you need to secure the trellis along with the one you put in the bottom very securely. And we are doing this using 8 inch wire ties. I think the 8 inch wire ties are the perfect size for securing heavy material like this. And once the wire ties are there in place. I think this trellis looks very sturdy and very secure. And you're going to be using a lot of wire ties. So I suggest that you buy a hundred pack. It's just a lot cheaper. And right in between we have added another fence post, a five foot fence post. And the reason for adding that in the center is because the trellis on the top are actually two sections, two more panels. So by adding the third fence in between, you add more stability, you add more structure to your trellis. And this trellis is so sturdy that it can be used to grow pretty much any type of climbing plant. And you can see the wire ties, they help secure the trellis very well. And it also lets the trellis maintain its natural arc very easily. And this is how the trellis looks like after it's done. As you can see, we've added two trellis in the center. And the long side is between the two trellises and it bends easily. And the wire ties that have been holding this in place can now be cut off. The edges can be cut off. You don't have to cut off the entire wire tie, but just the tails that are left. And a lot of people just leave the tails on and that makes it look very ugly. I highly recommend that you cut off the tails because the wire ties will still hold everything in place. And these are quite long wire ties. So while you want the rigidity of the 8 inch wire tie, you don't want the long tails. So just cut them off one by one and your trellis will start looking very beautiful. And the final step is to just spray paint the wire ties. I think the wire ties are the only ones that stand out and don't look that beautiful. So once you spray paint them, I think they blend in very nicely to the actual trellis. And I'm using the same color spray paint that I used to paint the trellis. And even to paint the trellis itself, you can use a spray paint. It looks beautiful. And this is how our final trellis looks like. I'm walking under it and this is about six feet high, the trellis. So it's not too high, which is good. And it also is sturdy enough to hold almost any kind of vegetable like goats, pumpkins, melons, cucumbers, almost anything that needs support. And now let's look at one interesting rose plant that we were growing in our home garden. And I promised I'll share some interesting stuff with you. And this is what it is. We were actually thinking whether this rose looks red in color or it turns into like a lighter pink color once the flowers fade off. And the plant decided to surprise us with a yellow flower, a yellow rose flower in the same plant. 
So this is a very common technique used by gardeners where different rose varieties can be grafted onto the same rose stem resulting in some beautiful plants like this. And we were not really expecting this. This looks absolutely beautiful. And now for the recipe section of our video. And today we have ivy gourd with peanuts for you. So as you saw, we harvested a lot of ivy gourds from our ivy gourd plant and we had to put it to good use. So the first step is to chop up the ivy gourds. And once you've chopped it up, just wash it well. You can wash it before you chop it as well. And this is how it looks like. The ivy gourds chopped up. They almost look like mini cucumbers. We're now going to chop up some chilies, some hot peppers, some garlic. The garlic adds a lot of flavor to what we are preparing and some cilantro which adds a lot of aroma and a little bit of spice to the ivy gourd with peanuts and we need half a lemon take some peanuts in a pan and just roast it we've used about one cup of peanuts and once they are roasted you can add them to any kind of blender and just slightly crush them you don't want to grind them to a powder but just crush them a little bit, keep it coarse so that it looks something like this. And then in a pan, you can take some oil, just a little bit of oil, and then add mustard seeds, and then add in the chopped up garlic and chilies. And finally, add in the chopped ivy gourd and then mix it well. And we are adding a couple of spoons of turmeric powder into this. And remember that turmeric is very good for your health. We use it almost every day. We're adding just a dash of chili powder. You don't have to do it, but just a dash of chili powder adds a lot of good flavor to this dish. And you start cooking it. Just keep it covered for about five minutes. And open it up and check how the ivy goods have cooked. And as you can see, we need to keep stirring it. Keep stirring it in this open pan for quite some time. It takes about five to seven minutes for the ivy goats to cook completely and it may take longer depending on your heat settings but usually about seven minutes or so is good enough to cook all these ivy goats and you need to keep stirring in between just to make sure that the ivy goats are not sticking to each other and they're cooking evenly and once they are slightly brown as you can see here this is the time to now move on to the next step which is to add the crushed peanuts and mix it well and once you add the crushed peanuts, it will still take a while for it to blend into the ivy gourd. The ivy gourd absorbs all the flavors of the peanuts and it takes some time. And finally, we garnish it with some cilantro. You can see it's already looking very beautiful. And once you mix in the cilantro, the cilantro uses a little bit of heat to spread its flavor within the dish. So just stir it up a little bit. And we are done preparing our dish. Now the only thing that we left out is the lemon. So just squeeze some lemon on top just to give it a nice flavor. And this is very delicious ivy gourd with peanuts that you can eat with tortillas, with rice, and it tastes absolutely amazing. So there we have it folks. That was our episode of the July 2020 episode of California Gardening. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and click on notifications to get all future updates. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments box below. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.